Tonight is January the 9th, 2016, and I want to show you something, a solution, or at least an understanding. Uh, <clears throat> this has to do with push-pull amplifiers and single-ended amplifiers, the transformer in particular. Uh, any of you that have watched many of my videos know that I took off on a 833A triode single-ended amplifier and I, and I use these big output transformers here. I have two of them. I, I was successful in building an amplifier running a pair of 3-400Zs or I could put 3-500Zs in it either, either one and make it work and get as much as 1500 watts out of one of these things. This is a solid transformer. I have a, a match pair of them. Had these things for well over 40 years. Anyway, this is the primary right here. I think you can see that, yeah, center tab. These are the secondary. It's got a lot of taps, so you can you can match it to darn or anything. It's really versatile. Okay, well, with that said, I, I decided I was going to use this because I know this thing will handle an enormous amount of power. I know it'll handle 4,000 volts and it won't arc. I've used this thing so many times in my life. I actually used it at in an AM transmitter one time where I put a pair of 4-400s here and then I put the other transformer over here and I could juggle the secondary impedances of this one to this one and then I took the primary of the second transformer and plate modulated a Class C amplifier. That was a long time ago. I don't have room to do that anyway. Anyway, I said this transformer's got to work. Well, it doesn't and I know why now. Uh, a number of you, two or three of you, mentioned to me, well, maybe you got core saturation. Maybe the core of the transformer is saturated. And I just kept thinking, I, that's not possible. <clears throat> not on a transformer this size. Well, that's the problem. To get right to the point. Um, after real measurements, inductance measurements with this guy, impedance measurements with my bridge over here, even using this little this little cheapy LC meter right here, I'll, I'm going to show you that. I'll take the camera off the stand in a minute, but I'll do this first and explain what I'm doing. What I found out is there is a gap of a fraction of a millimeter in the core of um, single-ended transformers, and there is not in a push-pull transformer. And since in a push-pull amplifier, since you've got one tube from center tap, you know, power supply to here, this is one plate and this is the other plate, the current's flowing in opposite directions and you have no magnetizing force in the transformer because the currents are in opposite direction. Well, I started out with this little 6v6 transformer that I've used a number of times and uh, you run just 50, 60 milliamps through it and the uh, inductance drops from 20 something henrys to fractional millihenrys when you saturate the core and it doesn't take much to saturate it at all even this big guy right here <coughs> what I've got here as you can see the transformer yeah so I, I tape a little uh, uh, meter to a digital meter I use these on my telescope and I'm just going to run it through a 100 ohm resistor 12 volts or 100 ohm resistor is going to give me like uh, 120 milliamps. Okay, well, here's the inductance. Let's see, I'm going to take, I'm going to have to take the camera off. I, I like to keep it steady, but you know, I just can't, I just can't get it across when this thing sits in one place. Okay, there's the inductance of that, uh, that big choke, a uh, big transformer right now, seven and a half Henry's. This guy right here. And if I measure it with this guy, I get the same number. Now, what I'm doing so that I can measure this is I'm isolating this meter from the circuit with these two huge capacitors. And I promise you that they have no effect on it. They're 470 microfarad. I get the same reading with or without them. And the reason I'm doing that is so I can apply DC across this but I can't apply DC across this. So this keeps the DC, these capacitors keeps the DC off my meter. 
okay? But all that said, and I, I won't get too much into the weirdness of the wires, but the wires all run around in a big circle. And what I'm going to do right here with this one, see there's a 100 ohm resistor, series of the meter, there's a meter in the battery. When I hook it up here, I'm going to be putting um, this 12 volts or 100 ohm resistor. I guess that thing shows up, doesn't it? Doesn't look like it. Uh, you can even read it. I'll wash that. There it is. 12.1 volts. But that's that's a little bit too much in the dark. Let me uh, get to a different light. Here. There you go. 12.1. There we go. Now when I hook this thing up, watch the seven Henrys, and we're monitoring the current on this guy right here. I hook this up here. See, we're only drawing um, 120 milliamp scale. That's 80. That's 90 milliamps. It says uh, over range. <coughs> Excuse me. It'll it'll come back in. It there it is. See what it dropped to. Should be able to see that's really important. 500 millihenries. The answer is pretty obvious, isn't it? Now, if I put another one, I'm just going to hold this one across. This is another 100 ohm resistor. Watch what it drops to. It doesn't have to drop any lower. If I can actually hold it there. See, millihenries. So, a push pull transformer is not going to work in a single ended amplifier. Uh, I, again, uh, no, two or three of you mentioned that to me. Well, maybe you got core saturation. Yeah, I had core saturation. So, uh, while some people will just tell you, I wanted to show you that it's actually real. I mean, even this monster right here, it doesn't take much to saturate the core when you're trying to run it as a single-ended amplifier. It, it doesn't work. Okay, so that answers that question. If you're going to build an SC amplifier, an SET, single ended triode amplifier, which is what a lot of guys build nowadays, you my, uh, my uh, camera dropped power on me. I had to change the battery. I think what I where it dropped power on me is is if you're going to build an SET amplifier, a single ended triode type amplifier, a popular thing of today. It's actually a lot of nonsense if you ask me, but I won't. I don't want to go there. Um, you're going to need a transformer design for. Uh, single-ended amplifier and you can't use a push-pull one in its place because the core will saturate immediately and, and look at the size of that thing it doesn't take much to saturate it. it takes even less to saturate this one 6v6 so that's that that's what the video is about now I'm also building some other stuff here that you might like I got in these transformers made from James Audio they're really nice looking these are 8k primaries 4, 8, 16 ohm output. I'm thinking of running the uh, 3B, uh, the 6, 64B triodes. I'm, I'm really charmed by the triodes. 12AX, 12AU driver. Uh, here's the tubes I also thought I might use if I don't use the 6B4s. These are actually an audio version of an 811. Pretty tube, huh? Got six of them. So any thoughts you have on that, I'm always uh, open to it. I use this transformer. I'm gonna have to measure something. I thought what I'd do is put 120 volts into this with a load on it, and measure, it, you know, it real close proximity like this, uh, which way it induces the least amount of uh, magnetic current magnetic voltage you know current into this tra into the transformers I may have to turn it 90 degrees it you know maybe maybe better like this I'm not real sure I'll have to see or you know maybe even some uh, EL34s down there I'm just still in the thinking stage of it I've really been charmed with these uh, little triode amplifiers Let's see what else. I'm, yeah, I like this amplifier right here. This is a six B. These are six B fours. Uh, that's not an Acrosound transformer that back there, although it looks like one. 
a 6S L7, 6SN7, it was 5V4. I just love this amplifier. That's the only one I listen to anymore. I don't listen to my Macintosh amps and my uh, Dynaco amps. I still use the, the Mac preamp. But anyway, that's it in a nutshell. Short video tonight. But I understand the problem now. And uh, it is what it is. So much for me and my SET amps. I did, uh, I have done some research and Hammond, Hammond Transformers makes a pretty big line of uh, SET amps, or uh, SET type transformers, single ended, didn't have to be a trial, but SE, single ended amplifier transformers up to a 75 water, which weighs like 28 pounds and costs like 250 bucks. So I'm just not going to spend that kind of money on something that I'm, I'm not going to use. So there it is. I hope this helps others uh, that might want to get into single-ended amplifiers versus push-pull amplifiers. Um, you got to get the right kind of transformer. The rest of it's just whatever you want to make it. Okay, before I go away tonight, I'll ask you your thoughts on this. I like I like symmetry. I wish I had a power transformer like this, but I don't. Now, if I don't use this transformer, I could use this one. I don't know if it looks better sitting that way, and, and actually the measurements of which way it induces the least amount of, of uh, hum into the transformer would be the way I would, I would place it in here, or that way. Or maybe, maybe the power supply yeah, the power supply should be completely separate what do you think what would you do would you build it something like that with whatever whatever I decide to use there does that look better is that more aesthetically pleasing with a separate chassis and power supply on it what do you think